Hey folks, it's Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog today. You've been waiting for it, you've been wanting to see it. We're gonna take the hams and the jaws out of our salt box today. So today I'm gonna to take you over, we'll show you what it looks like. We've already pulled all the salt off of the meat and basically we had to break it apart. Let me show you the tool. Well, let's just get into the vlog. So let's have a little bit of fun. We're gonna teach you what we do when we take our hams out of our salt to cure them in the smokehouse and we'll put them in bags. We'll show you the whole process. It's gonna be pretty awesome. Come on along. Woo! Yes, So here's what everything looks like, okay? These are your hams that you see right here and a shoulder. We've got Midland meat. We've got fat back right there. We got hog jaws right there. And we'll pull these out of the box here today and we'll show you the exact process that we go through in order to preserve the meat. And we'll give you a step-by-step. -step. There we go. We're just, so well, we're gonna put these back. right over there. Okay. This is the fat back. And you can tell that this is a midland. This has a strict lean in this. Okay. Well, the fat back does. Why are you flipping them? Why? Well, yeah. Well, because you don't know which way the, um, in other words, blood it, on the bottom of the box. Yeah. Blood was on the bottom of the box, but I left a layer of salt over to cover it up yeah. because it will leak in warmer days so when, you it gets, it. when it gets hot. The, uh, like up into the 65 or 70 degrees, these things are going to come alive. Gotcha. Okay. And that's all in the curing process, expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. Gotcha. So what we have here, guys, this is fat back, and you can see it's just basically a blaze of fat, a big wedge of fat, and that comes from the center of the back of the hog. Then you have the midland meat, which is a little bit further down, and it has a little streak of lean meat. You can see that. kind of looks like bacon. All this stuff has been in here curing for about six weeks now, and the temperatures have been just right. What my dad was explaining to me about these hams is the curing process, the, the hams will warm up and cool down, and warm up and cool down, and expand and contract, and pull salt in and push blood out, and pull salt in and push moisture out. So the goal is to push the blood and the moisture out. So when we first got in here, we had to break through the salt because it had absorbed all the moisture and turned into like a brick. So today we're just going to take out two shoulders and two hams and I'll show you those and we'll show you the process. As you age it, it this is beginning to age and it's turning the color yellow. Yeah. Okay. And as it ages, it'll yellow okay. like that. And then when it turns, starts to turn yellow down in here into the meat, that's when it's cured. Okay. Now these are littler pieces. These are the jowl that comes off the jowl. Yeah. Fat back itself is put there to protect your tenderloins. This little dip that's in the, the fat back, that's where the tenderloin laid. Yeah. In behind that fat back. Yeah. There is no tenderloin on the, the yeah. midlands, but the ribs laid against the midlands. All right, we're gonna get our first shoulder out. Isn't that a thing of beauty right there? Nice. We're gonna set it in a box on the back of the truck. And it is cold out here. Wind is whipping. It's a good day to do this. Here is a nice, pretty country ham. Nice. God, that's something beautiful right there. All the work that goes into this stuff, it's really something special, guys. I'm glad I can share it with you. All right, here's our final ham. And we're gonna go ahead and take some of the hog jowls out of there too, okay? We'll take two jowls out. These are our hog jowls. That's the jaw part of the hog, right here. So we'll take these hams, shoulders, and hog jowls, and we're gonna push them up in the back of the old truck here, and we'll carry them over to the house, and we'll show you the next step. You know, guys, there's a few things here that you just can't see, and I can't show you the feel of the hams, what they feel like. They're really stiff, and they're really, really cold, okay? So that salt holds on to the cold and helps preserve that meat. And the smells, when you open up that salt box, you can just smell that curing meat. There's just a smell there that, you know, you just don't get anywhere else. So I just want to tell you guys that. There's a few things that I just can't, I can't share it with you because you just have to be here. So hopefully you decide to do this on your own sometime. Very interesting part of Appalachian heritage. 
Okay, so the next step in this process is we're gonna make a mixture. We're gonna make a mixture in this little pan and we're gonna use this paintbrush right here. And we're gonna use liquid smoke and we're gonna use a little bit of water and brown sugar. So you can use brown sugar, you can use honey, you can use white sugar, whatever you wanna use. The reason for the sugar is to get a sticky substance on the ham. So we'll rinse the hams off, we'll rinse off the salt, we'll let them sit out here in the wind and dry as much as we can, and then we'll make the mixture. It's kinda of gonna be a sticky, um, almost half the consistency of honey. You just want it to stick. And the reason we're doing this mixture on the outside of the ham is so that we can get our black pepper and our red pepper, which is a mixture here of red pepper that was grown on the farm. We'll take that mixture and we'll cover the ham with the mixture. Then we'll dust the ham heavily with black pepper. And then we'll go to the bones on both ends of the hams and the shoulders and we'll coat them with red pepper. And the reason for the red pepper on the bone is there's a certain kind of bug that likes to eat ham. It likes to eat the salted meat. So you can get a bug in this meat and it will destroy it. So we're putting a coat of pepper on there for flavor and to keep the bugs out. And the red pepper is on the bones because the type of bugs that like the bones don't like the red pepper and that keeps them out. My dad was saying that he'd gone in and he'd cured hams and spent all this time and all this effort, all this energy, all this work and gone into the smokehouse and went to take his nice 50 pound ham down and went to go lift it and went whoop right to the ceiling because the bugs had gotten in and eaten everything but the skin. Man, what a disappointment that must have been. But um, lessons learned and lessons hopefully you're gonna learn today. So let's get these hams out and get to work. Here are the jaws. Here are the shoulders, and those two are the hams right there. Now folks, I want you to pay extra special attention to what these hams look like before we rinse them off, and then compare it to what they look like after we rinse them off. Okay, and that's the end, that's the hock end, and you can see it's really dried out on the ham hock end. And these are the shoulders right here. Just pay attention to what they look like, and then what they'll look like when we're done. It's gonna be really interesting. See a before and after seems a little counterintuitive to wash off something you've been trying to dry for so long, but this is the process. Oh. Big, beautiful hams. Folks, if you like this kind of stuff, if you find this interesting, if you find value in this content, please click that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. You know, all of our videos and all of our vlogs aren't educational like this, but this is just something really special we could share with you. So be sure you leave a comment down there, ask questions. There's no reason anybody shouldn't click that like button. If this is something you're interested in, something you enjoy, the way to give back is clicking the like button. If you're interested in some t-shirts, there'll be links down there in the video description, okay? The next step is we're gonna put them in these baskets so that they can air dry. And you wanna do this on a nice windy day so that they can air dry nicely. <laughs> Now for our smaller pieces of meat, we have this little meat hook apparatus. I'll post a link down below. Any of the tools and stuff that we use in the vlog, I'll post links down below at the very bottom. Pretty cool. Pretty neat, that's the hog jaw. We will add a nice quarter of a cup of thereabouts. Maybe an eighth of a cup of, um, of our warm water. And then we'll mix that up and let it completely dissolve and they'll be ready to paint our hams with. You don't want no thick coat, don't want a double, you don't want two coats, you just want a coat. Looking good, looking good. Go on, come at it like all that. There we go. Ain't it getting pretty now? There we go, got a good color to it. The liquid smoke portion of this kind of takes away from having to make a smoke house per se. So this gives you that smoke flavor without the smoke house and all the trouble that goes along with that. Guys, we're really, really close. We're probably two miles away the crow flies to Martinsville Speedway, uh, if you're a NASCAR fan. Uh, I mentioned NASCAR in my vlogs quite a bit because you know we're in NASCAR country, we're in racing country here, so we can actually hear the cars over at the track right now doing some practicing. Look how pretty these hams look. We've got the jaws all painted up and the hams and the shoulders all painted up. I'll get you a good close up. 
Isn't that pretty? It's got a nice golden hue shining in the sun. It's really windy out here and it's important that we do this on a windy day so that the stuff, this glaze basically dries up and gets sticky. There we go. We'll go back over here to our ham. There's a bone right here. That's what we're covering to keep the bugs out. And once again, this is to cover the bone. The marrow of the bone. Certain bugs desire the marrow of the bone. So we are trying with the red pepper, we are trying our best to keep a fly from laying an egg and then its larvae beginning to survive. So he's gonna lightly rub the black pepper on there and just rub it in. Not so much really heavy on the skin side because that's the least vulnerable side. But then once we get on the other side, it'll be covered very, very good. Make sure you just don't get in a hurry and take your time. This is something that's gonna cure for years, for at least a year, maybe 18 months, maybe 16 months. It's gonna be kept in a barn that's probably gonna reach temperatures of 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's interesting. It's interesting how it keeps. And the cure, mmm, delicious. In about a year and a half, we'll get these hams down, we'll cut them up on the vlog, and show you all about it. There we go. Right, now get your hot good and all that stuff. There we go. It's awfully easy to forget to put black pepper also in the hot. Yeah. Once you've already red peppered, it's easy to forget to do that. So a little more detail in how much pepper to use here, okay? Putting it pretty thick, like a little mound of pepper, and then I'll show you how I knead it in here, okay? So take a little pepper in your hand and kind of pat it along in there. Guys, I'm so glad that you'd come along for the journey to learn how to do this. You know, this is a fine art. It's going to be lost at some point. Um, you know, folks don't know how to do stuff like this. They don't know how to preserve food and the old fashioned way, the old style. The, the folks just don't know how to do it anymore. And this has been passed down through generations of my family and now I'm passing it on to you. So it's really something special. I'll get you a good close up here. It's that, this end right here. Just pack it full. Oh. So here's a little detail of what we're gonna do with the paper bags. We're gonna put one bag over one end of the ham or shoulder and the other bag over the other end. And that's basically it. This is just another barrier. It also allows the ham to breathe while it's in the smokehouse hanging and it keeps the bugs out. Try not to tear your bag because pretty much if you tear your bag, you're doing away with the reason you got it in the first place. Slips on like a sock, like a glove. We're gonna tie a string around the hock and then we'll wrap the ham. Nice and snug. We're gonna take our string. Uh, told you it was windy out here. <laughs> you really can't use too much string in this situation. You just wrap it up nice and tight, tie your string off nice and tight. And now we're going to drop it into our cotton bags, okay? And these are cotton bags that we had made at a local sewing shop, but you can just use pillowcases. These are a little bit too big to fit in a pillowcase. Okay, so this is the bag that we're going to use, and we're going to stuff the ham in there, and we're going to put the ham hock end down. So in other words, the small end where the foot was is going to go down. And we'll tie the bag up top, and we'll hang it in the shed, okay? We'll hang it in the smokehouse. Precious cargo right here, guys. Okay, watch your right hand. You hock in the corner. Yep. All right. So you work that hock down into a corner. It's hard work, guys, but it's worth it. What we do is twist our bag up nice and tight, and then we'll tie some string around it. Yeah, you need some pretty tough string, okay? You wanna use some nice nylon string if you have it. Tie it around. Or you can use some like commercial grade uh, um, paracord if you want to use that. Something really, really tough because you sure don't want all this work to go to waste. 
give her string a good test. No, sir. Good thing we tested it. You can't make that stuff up. Tested, approved. In case you don't know, we are five days into these two hogs. Five days work. Now we could have busted butt and probably got it all done in three days, but we're five days into this. It's some work. It's some work to process in a hog the old fashioned way, but this hog will feed a family for a whole year. I mean, so in the winter time, cozy up by the fire with a good old pot of pinto beans and a ham hock in there. Just can't beat it. Test it. Yep. This is all you want to do. We got two hams and two shoulders. We're going to take them up to the smokehouse. We're here at the smokehouse. We've got the hams and the shoulders all bagged up. And we also bagged up the hog jowls. And we're going to hang them in the smokehouse right here. I'll take you in real quick and show you the smokehouse. This is where we've hung hams ever since I was a little boy. So for the past 40 years, this is where the hams have been hung. And basically, we just hang them up here on these nails. They do great. Now, while my dad's getting the area ready to hang the hams up, he told me that there's a certain type of mold, a certain type of fungus that grows in this building that he knows makes those hams taste absolutely perfect. Thank you. Really good. That's it. You drunk this. Okay, folks, so we got the hams all hung up here in the uh, smoke shack or the smokehouse and my dad's got them all in the right position that he wants them in so that's how we cure hams here on the farm you'll get a little bit more follow-up if you stick to the vlog thanks a lot guys come on back and see me we've done something pretty cool today i'm glad to share it with you click the like button we'll see you next time okay thank you Yes, I was